Hi, I'm Davey. I'm awesome. And welcome to Dave's Awesome Stories, where I tell funny stories from my past or go on a rant in an effort to make you laugh. This week it's more of a rant, just kind of thinking about what's in a name. What inspired this subject was I was talking with somebody not that long ago about Betamax versus VHS. Now some of you are already asking, what, what is Betamax? Never heard of it. Not surprised. Those of you who know what Betamax is, please give me a moment while I explain it. See, in the mid to late 70s, the technology was born to where we could watch movies from our home whenever we wanted. We could record stuff off of television, or we could buy a tape that we could put into a player and play it right there on our television, instead of having to go all the way to the movie theater or just hope it would air on television in between commercials. The first one to come out was a Betamax player with Betamax tapes. They looked like VHS tapes, except they were skinnier and not as long, but apparently they were better than VHS tapes. I can't tell you from experience, I don't remember watching Betamax. I remember my dad having one, and it's sitting in the garage collecting dust because he only had like two or three movies for it. I vaguely remember him one time pulling it out, hooking it up just so he could watch his Betamax copy of Crocodile Dundee. But I will say this, Betamax had a niche following for a long time. Enough of a niche following that apparently in 2002, a guy I knew was telling us the story of when he worked for a place that was trying to bring back Betamax, renting it. I'll probably tell you that story sometime later. But it was ridiculous. Especially because by 2002, Betamax had long since lost the war to VHS. VHS came out later, wasn't apparently as good, because anybody who did like Betamax will go on and on and on with, it was so much better. I mean, Betamax had 80 more lines of resolution on it. Yeah, I don't think anybody really cared. Because it didn't last. I mean, kind of. Well, doing a little bit of research for this video, they actually were making new copies of Betamax stuff longer than VHS. They stopped making new stuff for VHS in 2006. Betamax went all the way to 2015. And if you can find a company that's willing to, like, grab an old blank Betamax tape and double tape a DVD for you, you can still get new copies if you're still interested. If you can find a place that's selling like backstock Betamax players, you can watch it on there. But it was in the 80s that VHS had basically taken over the market and became the really only thing around unless you could find a place that was catering to the niche audience that was Betamax all the way. And people will constantly ask like, why would Betamax not last if it was clearly better? It had better resolution. Probably because good resolution is good enough. Like, obviously, I have HD TV because that's just standard now, but I remember when it first came out and people were oohing and on about it, I didn't understand the big deal about it. I mean, I could see the difference, but it wasn't such a big deal that I was willing to spend an extra 100 bucks on a television. It's not that important to me to see the booger hanging out of Brad Pitt's nose. Because I will say this, by the 90s, like I said, my dad had the Betamax player, the big, ugly, clunky Betamax player that sat in our garage or storage space for years and never did anything with it. By that point, I don't remember ever seeing Betamax tapes in any of the video stores. I don't even know what happened to my dad's Betamax player. I doubt he threw it away. He never threw anything away. He was a bit of a hoarder. He'd keep it until he could make something out of it. So I probably became a shelf or a chair leg or a belt buckle or something. In fact, come to think of it, I do remember him having a belt buckle that said Beta on it. I honestly think the biggest reason that VHS overtook Betamax so much. Because again, it was around up until 2015, but after like 1989, you couldn't really find them anywhere. Most people thought they were completely gone, including me. I thought you couldn't get them at all anymore. Found out recently that apparently you could. But I really think the reason wasn't because that VHS was better. It later ended up becoming cheaper because of volume, but I think the biggest thing was the name. Because VHS, VCR, they both roll right off the tongue. They're simple. They're quick. Betamax? I, honestly, growing up for years, I remember my dad's Betamax player. I didn't remember what it was, though. I just remember it was a type of VCR that played the weird tapes. I remember first hearing Betamax and somebody telling me what Betamax was and thinking, the name Betamax sounds like something I would use to kill bugs. Seriously, that's what that name sounds like to me. It sounds like bug spray. Like I can hear the commercial in my head. Got roaches? Get Betamax. But that doesn't just extend to technology. I'm also a big fan of comic books. 
And one of the most iconic characters in the history of comic books, probably the second most iconic, right behind Superman, is Batman. You don't have to like comic books to know who Batman is, or even know his backstory. It's been told so much. But when you think about it, if you first heard the name, you'd probably think, that sounds stupid. Especially considering the time it came out. See, after Superman came out with Action Comics, and it was a big hit, that became the golden age of comic books, and they started coming out with character after character after character after character, and most of them are no longer around. And one of the formulas they were all doing back then was get an animal, put man at the end of it. We legit had characters like Cheetah Man, Cat Man, Owl Man. He later came back in the 2000s as an alternate universe Batman who was actually a villain and him and Batman fought. That was kind of cool, but the superhero Owl Man didn't really pan out. But Batman did. And again, when you think about it, it's kind of dumb. Especially because at the time, the backstory, the, the code that says he won't kill no matter what, he won't use guns, that stuff came later. When he first started, he was just a vigilante, dressed as a bat, and he used guns. So why did that stick, but Cheetah Man didn't? Probably because Batman just has a nice ring to it. Think about some of the other iconic superheroes, though. Would American Man or United States Guy have been as successful as Captain America? I don't think so. Iron Man. A lot of comic book fans love to argue. Yeah, it makes no sense that they call him Iron Man because his suit is not actually made out of iron. But it sounds better than Metal Man or Steel Man or Poly Alloy Man. Iron Man has a nice ring to it. Spider-Man would not have worked out if he was Arachnid Man or the Human Spider. They even made fun of that in the first movie. Or even food companies. Would Delaware Fried Chicken have been as successful as Kentucky Fried Chicken? I doubt it. Something about Kentucky Fried Chicken, KFC, rolls off the tongue, and they're one of the most popular companies in the world. All over the world, you can find KFCs. Almost as many KFCs as McDonald's, way more than Burger King. Probably because in other countries there's some that they don't eat beef, but pretty much everywhere they eat chicken. I mean, I don't go there anymore because I had to mess up the recipe, but not only was it delicious, it had a catchy name. But then there comes that one, McDonald's. McDonald's is the most popular fast food chain in the world. They're in almost every country. They're all over the United States. Unless you live in a really, really small town, there's probably a McDonald's around. And why? Is McDonald's better than all the other places? No. Heck, if I was going to come up with a name for a fast food restaurant in a world where McDonald's didn't exist, or Burger King, I probably would have told somebody, yeah, Burger King sounds better. Because you're saying you're the king of burgers, but Burger King has always been a distant second to McDonald's. And ultimately, when it comes to McDonald's, I've talked about it before, when I go to McDonald's nine times out of ten, it's not their burgers I'm craving, it's the fries. And even that one time out of ten, it's not a burger I'm craving, it's a Big Mac. If I'm craving a burger, the Big Mac is not going to satisfy me. Then again, there's also times that that one out of ten times, I might be craving chicken nuggets. Or the McRib is back. But it still boils down to, like... Is McDonald's the place serving the best burgers? No. If I'm craving a burger, and my options are McDonald's or Burger King, I'd go to Burger King, because the burger craving will get satisfied from there. It won't get satisfied from McDonald's. Then again, when it comes to Burger King, if I'm craving a burger, I still go somewhere else, usually. It would have to be a really weird town where that really was my only two options. But why is McDonald's the most iconic? Some people try to say, well, because they were the first fast food chain. Wrong. The very first fast food chain was White Castle. But the thing is, one, they don't expand as much because they don't franchise. They're all owned by the same people. And not only that, they don't have a strong presence on my side of the country. Like, to this day, when I do talk about White Castle, I still get West Coast people going, Wait, that's not a made-up restaurant for that movie? No, and I can't blame them for not knowing it. On the West Coast, there really is no White Castles. A few years ago, we apparently got one out here. One. And it's in Las Vegas which is nowhere near where I live, which makes me sad. I guess in my emails, letters, and violent phone calls, I should have specified Reno, Nevada. On the West Coast, that's your only option, is the one in Las Vegas, or you have to go to the East Coast. On the East Coast, of course, they're everywhere, which is why I don't blame West Coasters for not knowing it was a real restaurant until that movie came out. I didn't know it was a restaurant until the movie came out. I thought it was just a company that made frozen mini burgers. But why McDonald's? Some of you think about that movie, The Founder, and how Ray Kroc was desperate to have the name McDonald's to the point that he screwed them over. 
in real life, it didn't really go down like that. They were just trying to convey what a jerk he was later in life. In real life, they later got angry for him calling himself the founder, but until then, they liked the guy, and it wasn't really that dramatic. It was he called and said, hey, how much to buy your guys' name and buy you guys out completely? And they said $2.7 million. 700000 for the IRS, a million each for us. He came up with it, he gave it to them. They didn't end on I hate you terms. One part that was real is one of the owners did ask him like, hey, why was it so important that you get our name? You could have just started your own restaurant and done all this. You knew all our secrets. Then again, pretty much everybody knew their secrets because in real life they held a class where if you paid them $900, they'd take you on a tour of their restaurant and then tell you all their secrets. One of the people that took that tour was Glenn Bell, the guy who invented Taco Bell. But apparently that one part was very real. When they asked him why, he said, the name. Something about the name just grabs people. And he's right. He's also right that probably not a lot of people would have went to his own restaurant, Crocs. Maybe people would have went to Ray's Burgers, but it probably wouldn't have become that iconic. But then another one that earlier this year, I found out a little interesting history on. I've told you guys in the past how one of my favorite cookies ever is that Oreo cookie. I love Oreos. I love Oreos so much that nowadays when my wife buys Oreos, she knows not to just hand them to me. Because I can't stop myself. I'll keep eating them until there is an empty cookie bag and me feeling ashamed of myself. So I'll ask her, can you get me some Oreos? She'll grab a few, put them on a little plate, maybe get me a glass of milk, and I'll dunk them until the bubbles stop. That way it feels like I drowned them. And I'll have my few Oreos and I'll be good. But if they're near me, they're all going away. My mother would buy Oreos, but this was how we could tell when money was really tight. When we would fluctuate from middle poverty to lower poverty is when my mom would not buy any name brands. Like anything. I've talked about it before. She'd stop buying Apple Jacks and she'd buy Apple Dapples. She'd stop buying Kraft or Hellman's mayonnaise and just buy a jar that said mayo on it. Didn't even have a company name because they didn't want to be blamed for it. And like I said, it only said mayo. So probably that later, if you could find out what company was responsible for this stuff, they could also be like, hey, Says there on the package, mayo. Doesn't say nays. We never claimed it was mayo nays. And then another thing she would buy, the cheaper brand of Oreos called Hydrox. And I used to remember always thinking that it was just a knockoff Oreo brand. Found out earlier this year, no, it's actually not. Technically, Oreo was a knockoff of them. Apparently the story goes that the two guys who helped create what later became Nabisco got forced out of their own company, created a new company, using their ideas to make baked goods like crackers and stuff, came up with an idea for a sandwich cookie. One that would be affordable because apparently back then, cookies were considered rich people desserts. But they came up with an, a sandwich cookie. Two chocolate cookies in the middle of a vanilla cream. It went crazy. It was outselling everything that the Nabisco cracker company was coming out with. So Nabisco decided to come back at them with Oreos. Now, Oreos are better than Hydrox, because as it turns out, when they came up with the Oreo, they got their chocolate supplied directly from Hershey. But I think that it wasn't just that, because they taste very much the same. Oreos are a little bit better. But the name Oreo sounds much better than Hydrox. Hydrox is still around, and apparently it's the originator but it's nowhere near as popular as Oreo. Why? Because Oreo sounds like it could be anything, and now it's a cookie, it's branded, and it rolls right off the tongue. Hydrox sounds like something I would clean my bathtub with. And this even all falls down to me. I get the question all the time, why go by Davy? Why not go by David? There are reasons for it. Number one, that was just what I was growing up being called. I did go through a phase when I was a teenager where I was like, I'm not a child, don't call me Davy, call me David. But I never liked being called David. That's my dad's name. I didn't like being called Dave. I'm not a surfer. But thinking about it now, I've got a channel called Davy is Awesome. Would David is Awesome sound better? No. Plus, I just prefer that name. Therefore, if you're gonna start your own business or something, take consideration of what are you gonna call it? There you have it, that's my story video this week. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you did, make sure to hit like, hit subscribe, Hit the little bell so you get notifications for when I post my videos and leave a comment. Tell me about some other products that are similarly the same, but you think one has a much better name. Love you guys.